Mm -hmm. It's John. Mm -hmm. Where's John today? He needs some encouragement. Send him a card this week. Say, hey, we missed you. That's an act of kindness. You can, you can be a blessing to somebody this week. Be a blessing. Be a blessing. Notice also, verse 25, notice Simeon's waiting. The Bible says in verse 25, And behold, there was a man of Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. In his prayer time, all of his life, he was waiting for the Messiah to come. And he had come. Waiting for the consolation, or in other words, the inauguration of the Ma Messiah's age. He couldn't wait for the Messiah to be born. But what's interesting here, people, this consolation was not to fulfill Jewish, the Jewish political hopes. Because remember, Jerusalem, you know, the nation of Israel right now is not exactly spiritual. They were in bondage to the Roman Empire. And they were looking for a Messiah to deliver them out of the Roman bondage. That's the only thing they were looking for. So when they thought, oh, when Jesus comes, that's it. He's going to destroy the Roman Empire. He's going to set up the thousand-year millennial, which we've been praying for all of these centuries. They missed the whole spiritual part. This When, when Simeon... He was waiting for the inauguration of the Messiah. He was waiting for the restoration of David's throne. No, no, no. But rather the salvation that Jesus would bring to human beings. Amen. That's what he was waiting for. Amen. As the Bible says in Luke chapter 19 verse uh, 10, it says, you know, Jesus came to save, to seek and to save those who were what? Lost. Listen, this morning, if you don't know Jesus Christ, you're lost. You're going to die in sin. What are you going to do with your sin? If you should happen to die today, and I hope you don't, but can you honestly say in your heart, you know you're going to heaven? Are you 100% sure you're going to heaven this morning? I am. And it's not because I'm a preacher. And it's not because I pastor a Baptist church. It's because many years ago, on June the 3rd, 1967, at 9.15 at night, I was witness to, and I saw my sin before God. And I got on my knees, and I said, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I realize you died for my sin. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Master of my life. I got saved that night, born again. It's never been the same after that you see that's what it's all about Simeon was saying I bless you Lord the constellation of Israel the inauguration of the Messiah has come man now has the chance to be saved see in Simeon's mind it was all spiritual but in the nation's mind it was all physical they were looking for a physical deliverance so he's blessed. He, he waited for it, and he got to see it. Simeon was looking for the Messiah, the redemption, the Master's return. He was looking for all of that. Yeah, Christmas is over, but we can have the hope that Jesus is coming again. Amen? Amen. You believe that? I do. I do. He's coming again. Are you ready for him? The Bible says in Matthew 24, 44, be also ready, as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. You've got to be ready when he comes. But notice also Simeon's respect in verse number 29. Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. Called, notice Simeon, called God Lord. Simeon recognized God was the one who possesses all power, all authority, to whom respect is due. You see, God is sovereign this morning, amen? amen. And, and therefore, we need to raise our voices to God 
Give Him the sovereign rule of our lives. I know sometimes that's hard. Many people will not fall upon their face and say, Lord God, here's my life. Take it and use it because they're afraid of what God's going to do. <laughs> Never be afraid of what God can do in your life. Amen? Because where God calls, God supplies and meets the need. Amen? I could, I could write a book on that. Maybe if I live long enough, maybe I will write a book. Who knows? But... God has not once failed me in my life. Now, he's brought me some close times. There's been times in my life and in my wife's life and that, you know, we say, Lord, what in the world are you doing? We don't understand this. But I never once doubted him. God's always in control. Amen? Amen. I look back on my life now and I, I see how God's directed and now I understand it. But while I was going through it, I didn't get it. Yeah. And sometimes in my immaturity, I'm, I'm going to complain. You know, you know what that is. At least I know I do it. Don't tell me you've never done that. But praise the Lord. Simeon here recognizes that the sovereignty of God in his life. Then I want you to notice last the man's comfort. He's going to die soon. He's an elderly man. He knows he's going to die. And verse 29 says, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart. Watch this. Depart in peace. He's going to die according to your word. So in other words, this is dismissal time. He's going to say howdyos here pretty soon. <coughs> but notice in his departing is beautiful. Did you see this? He's going to die soon, but he would die with the peace of God in his life. I love it. Not, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace. Many people will die this week. Many people will die today. Many people will die this week. Many people are going to die this year without the peace of God in their life. And they're going to die and go to hell. Because they did not want Jesus to be in their lives. Many people will die without no peace. And I tell you what, I've been by the deathbed of many people who do not know the Lord. And the fear on their face. Because they do not have the peace of God that passes all understanding. They don't know the peace of God at all. Simeon's going to die with peace on his heart. Simeon has seen the Messiah. Now his life is complete and is ready to go home to be with God. He is actually saying to God, Hey, I've seen the Messiah. I'm ready to die. What comfort it is to die in Jesus. Amen. Amen. People ask me all the time, Are you afraid to die? No. Nope. I'm looking forward to it. You know why? Finally, I get rid of this old sinful body. Uh, no more struggling in this world. No more sorrow. No more tears. No more pain, man. Brand new body. I'm with Jesus for all eternity. That's where I want to be. Amen? Now, don't misunderstand me. I love my family. I love my wife. And I, and, you know, but you know what? Compared to heaven, I can't wait to die. Might be today. Might be tomorrow. Who knows? Family might. Some might say, yeah, I'm glad he's gone. So <laughs> glad that preacher's out of my life, you know. I won't have to hear his voice no more. There'll be something like that. Some will be sad. But listen, let me give you some advice. Don't be sad for me. While you're bawling and crying, I'm having a good time in heaven. I'm with Jesus, man. I'm happy as a lark. And don't wish me back. Because <laughs> I ain't coming back until, until I come back and, and reign with him a thousand years. Then I'll be back, okay? But don't wish me back because I'll, I'll say, Lord, I don't want to go back. <laughs> I'm happy in heaven, right? Man, no sin. Loving it there. You ever thought about that? Can you imagine Jesus? He left a perfect place to come to this sinful world. What must have been like? 
living, living, leaving perfect bliss and coming down to a sinful planet? <laughs>